Well, almost all Republicans and even some Democrats were relieved yesterday when the president announced 10th Circuit Court of Appeals Judge Neil Gorsuch as his pick to replace Antonin Scalia on the Supreme Court. Instead of picking Judge Judy or Judge Dredd, the president picked a popular jurist who was confirmed unanimously by the Senate just a decade ago. A former acting solicitor general for President Obama has already called for liberals to back Gorsuch. But one man is not sold. He is Max Zilberg. He's a Democratic political strategist who's consulted on more than 100 campaigns. And he says Gorsuch is an extremist, a nominee Democrats ought to fight. Max Zilberg joins us now from Los Angeles. Max, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks so, for having me, Tucker. I, you know, I, I think it's totally legitimate to be against Gorsuch on the merits, but extremist doesn't seem a term that suits him exactly. How is he ex an extremist? So we've got to look at the history of the Supreme Court here because Antonin Scalia is considered by some measures to be the most conservative Supreme Court justice of the last 75 years. If Gorsuch is a Scalia clone and on many issues he's shown himself to be that, then he's pretty far out of the mainstream. I mean, he ruled parents shouldn't be able to sue a police officer who tasered their son to death. I mean, that's extreme if you ask me. Why do you think he did that? He just didn't like the kid or why? I mean, was so there a principle Gorsuch behind that, or that was it just pure meanness, do you think? What's your guess? I think that Gorsuch believes that if there's some plausible presumption of innocence from someone in a position of authority, then generally we should be deferential to that, which is very concerning when the person in the highest position of authority, Donald Trump, has shown a regular willingness to flout the Constitution. I would be willing to drop my opposition to Gorsuch if Gorsuch went out and said, you know what, if the president tries to establish a religious test or tries to start, you know, rounding people up into internment camps, then I'm going to say no to that when that happens eventually, because yeah. it could happen. So you've, you, you, you've had a sip of paranoid soda tonight, I noticed. So, but you, you haven't, you're not that familiar with, with Gorsuch's record then, because, I mean, there have been a couple of cases, including one pertaining to American Indians, where he's ruled on behalf of religious minorities and said the state can't interfere because it can't violate people's religious principles. That's reassuring, wouldn't it be? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And there are a few cases on which he has ruled w the way Scalia ruled on civil liberties, which is reassuring. But that being said, on issues from abortion, on issues like contraception, and most concerningly on campaign finance. You know, Donald Trump said that he was going to drain the swamp when he came into office. And Gorsuch believes that campaign contributions of unlimited quantities are a fundamental human right and that we should all have the right to bribe politicians as much as we want. Now, I'm a political consultant. I benefit no. if that law is in place, but that doesn't Don't, make it right. You know, let's, let's, have a, let's have an adult conversation here. I don't think he said bribing politicians is a human right. There's, there is an, a, there's an adult debate over whether expressing your political views extends to giving money to political figures to espouse their views. And that's not a small thing. That gets to the heart of what the First Amendment means. You may disagree with people on the other side, but it doesn't mean they're for bribing politicians. And by the way, as you know, you just well, supported a candidate who raised twice the money of Donald Trump. So, I mean, let's not get partisan and stupid here. Give me the case for why this guy's an extremist. Well, as I mentioned, on campaign finance, I mean, this is not a small thing. I mean, up until 10 years ago, it was pretty broad Supreme Court jurisprudence that said that, of course, there's a right to limit how much you give to a candidate because, you know, if you give someone $100,000, they're probably a lot more likely to vote your way. In the case of Donald Trump, if you spend $150 million on him and his candidates in a super PAC like Carl Icahn does, maybe you'll get appointed regulatory czar on the yeah, Hobby we're, Lobby we're getting case. Back into the, we're getting back into the partisan dumbness because, as you know, and this is not a defensive Trump, just as someone who covered the campaign pretty closely, Trump took half as many campaign donations as Hillary Clinton. And I don't want to relitigate this. I just want to expose what you're saying is dumb, because it is. So let's just get back to the core question. So this guy is saying, the Supreme Court nominee is saying, that in a lot of cases, the courts should not be making decisions that, and the president should be making decisions, that the Congress ought to be making. The, the executive and the judiciary shouldn't be passing laws that's reserved for the legislative branch. Okay? Why is that a bad mm -hmm. thing? Isn't that empowering to the, to the population? Shouldn't people, see, shouldn't they be able to vote for lawmakers who make the laws rather than have judges do so? You know, that is a good thing. And his rulings on executive power, there are some of them that there are reasons to find hope in. I mean, I'm not going to be a partisan ideologue okay. about this. If he stands firm and says that I'm going to stand up to the executive branch, that would be a great thing. There were issues where Antonin Scalia did that. There were issues where he didn't. That being said, if you look at the record of Gorsuch compared to the record of Scalia, Gorsuch has a background of, prior to his service in the judiciary, being something of a partisan political figure. I mean, his work in the Bush administration 
administration. His mother was a partisan political figure before him. So this is not a guy who's come from a background of purely scholarly legal inquiry. This is a guy okay. whose background has largely been service to one political party. So should we hold as a general matter people responsible for the actions of their parents? I think that if someone's parents commit crimes the way that his mother is accused of being committing, then maybe they shouldn't be nominated for the Supreme Court unless they answer some pretty basic questions. I mean, what did he know? When did he know it? So and do you, does he think do what you his mom did is wrong? Collective, do you believe in collective punishment? So, like, if, if someone no, commits I, I a crime, that the then Supreme his family Court ought to be implicated in it, too? I mean, I, I thought we judge no, people I believe, on what they do I and say as individuals. He's being nominated to the Supreme Court of the United what States of America, the it? most important judicial body in the history of the world. Uh -huh. And frankly, you know, the fact that the first time his name, his last name started appearing in the news was the fact that his mother was implicated in one of the largest ranging scandals of the you 80s really is his a mom? problem and something this that should This guy's been on the court for over 10 years. <laughs> you haven't said word one about it. He passed unanimously. If he's such I, an extremist I've said lunatic, words one, two, and three about his rulings. Look, I've said words one, two, and three about his records on the court on issues from his rulings on unlimited campaign contributions, his ruling no, on Mac, contraception, Mac. the idea that mm -hmm. private companies should not be allowed to, or you know, should be, right. you know, not okay. be required you, to provide you read contraception. The talking point this morning. Is, but last question, really quick. The guy's been a federal judge for 10 years, and I haven't heard a single complaint about him. Have you? No, and I hadn't heard a single complaint oh. about Merrick Garland, and yet the Republicans refused no. to give the man a vote for an entire I'm, year. I'm not I mean, that. you know, at a certain I point, what's that. good for the goose because is I'm good for the gander. Well, where were you a year ago? Where were you a year ago on that issue? <laughs> Actually, I was never for that. I think they should have given him a hearing. I think you should hear what people have to say. Did, and did you speak it. out against it? I did. I did, and I certainly didn't attack his no, parents. No, thank you. I We're out of time. Thanks.